from the studios of Channel 12, I Believe in Miracles, with a message of hope and music of inspiration, with your host, Pastor John Michael. Uh, do you have something that needs fixing? Uh, I would sure wish that I could help fix it. Now, I'm not, uh, you know, I can't do much, but I know someone who can, and um, God is in charge of all things, and He has done a pretty good job of creation, don't you agree? We want this program to uh, kind of make uh, things settle down for you. Uh, we'd like to see things uh, brighten up for you. We'd like to see things uh, maybe uh, enriched in your life. And uh, if you are in sorrow, may you find some comfort. If you are in weakness, may you find some strength. Anyway, we're here to share this uh, few minutes with you, and we hope that you will stay with us till the end. Marilyn joins me. And we're going to do the song that's the title for our program. Song, the music written by John W. Peterson. I always say that, but a man by the name of Buck wrote the words. And here are the words for the song, I Believe in Miracles. Creation shows the power of God. There's glory all around And those who see must stand in awe For miracles abound I believe in miracles I've seen a soul set free Miraculous, the change in one Redeemed through Calvary I've seen the lily push its way Up through the stubborn sod I believe in miracles For I believe in God I cannot doubt the work of God it's plain for all to see the miracles that he has worked should lead to Calvary the love of God O oh power divine tis wonderful to see the miracle of grace performed within the heart of me. I believe in miracles. I've seen a soul set free. Miraculous, the change in one redeemed through Calvary. I believe in miracles, for I believe in God. The beauty of God's creation is everywhere. What a wonderful scene it is in the fall time of the year whether it's sunrise or sunset, it is beautiful to see the handiwork of the Lord. The heavens declare the glory of God and the firmament showeth His handiwork. Psalms 19 and verse number one. It's good for us to think that God is revealed in His world book as well as in His word book, the Bible. And He is revealed to us in His Son, Jesus Christ. And we want to declare that good and, and um, helpful message to you today. Well, our program is called I Believe in Miracles because there are many wonders, things we cannot understand, things we can't figure out, things that are a mystery, things that cause us to stand in awe, stand in awe and reverence of God, the invisible God, for God is a spirit and they that worship Him must worship Him in spirit and in truth. So may your spirit somehow be uh, alive to His spirit 
And may my spirit be alive to his spirit and to your spirit that something good can happen for us today as we seek to do the will of the Lord. Marilyn's ready to play the organ, so here's her songs face to face and until then. This past week, I did get up early to see the, the uh, moon and the eclipse, and another reminder of so many interesting things there are to behold in this world. But there are wonderful things. Uh, open my eyes that I may behold wondrous things out of thy law. That is, in the scriptures, there are many wonderful things. Now, I have a quotation here, a brief quotation. I wonder where, if you know where it comes from. Uh, it goes like this, Thy will be done. Thy will be done. Can you identify, first of all, um, where in the Bible it's found? And secondly, what is the context for that phrase? Thy will be done. Well, if you said it is in the Sermon on the Mount, you're right. And if you said it's in Matthew chapter 6, you're right. And if you said it's in the Lord's Prayer, you're right. Commonly call the Lord's Prayer or the model prayer or the sample prayer that Jesus gave to his disciples when he said, Our Father who is in heaven, hallowed be your name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Thy will be done. Are you interested at all in the will of God? 
I've been reading through the Gospel of Matthew now in my morning Bible reading. And of course, I read this phrase. I didn't particularly uh, dwell on it when I read it. And later in the same, uh, in the same book in chapter number seven, same sermon, the Sermon on the Mount, I read this paragraph, not everyone that says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven. I'm interested in getting people into the kingdom of heaven. I'm interested in being there myself. I'm interested in my family being there. I'm interested in my, my uh, church friends being there. I'm interested in everyone to get to enter, to get into the kingdom of heaven. It says, uh, but he that doeth the will of my Father which is in heaven. Now, not, ev not everybody will, but those that do the will of the Father. So many of you will say in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in your name or have we not uh, cast out devils in thy name and in thy name done many wonderful works? Verse 23, then will I profess unto them that I, knew you, that I never knew you. Depart from me, you that work iniquity. So here is, which is more important? I ask my question, to do wonderful works or the will of God? Well, according to this paragraph, uttered by the words of Jesus, it is the will of God. Now, the, the verse that really impressed me was uh, found in chapter number 12. So I'm going to turn there. And in this paragraph, it's a story about Jesus meeting with people and talking to them. And there was a group of disciples. It was inside of a building. And someone interrupted him and said, hey, there are people outside that want to see you. Your mother's here and your brothers are here. He said, they would like to talk to you. And uh, then this is what he said. He answered and said unto them, who is my mother and who are my brothers? And he stretched forth his hand toward his disciples and said, behold, my mother and my brothers. For whosoever will do the will of my Father which is in heaven, get that, whoever will do the will of my Father which is in heaven, the same is my brother and sister and mother. So this sort of takes this business of the will of God and places it, place, places it in the, the best of contexts, which is the family context, the bond between mother and son, between mother and daughter, between uh, siblings and the fellowship that is ideal within that unit called the family. So we see the will of God is important in the prayer that Jesus gave to his disciples. The will of God is better and more important than doing wonderful works. The will of God is, is, uh, is, is like in the best of relationships. And as a disciple, as a follower of Jesus, we can participate in this experience called the will of God. What is the will of God? So that's what I want you to ponder with me today. What is the will of God? And have you any assurance you're in the will of God? And how do you get in the will of God? I want to give to you some principles that are found in the Bible. First of all, it was David Livingston. He was a, uh, a traveler, a humanitarian. He was a, a, a missionary and uh, he was a geographer traveling throughout Africa. And uh, he, he wrote these words. He said, I had rather be in the heart of Africa in the will of God than on the throne of England out of the will of God. Now it is said that these were his last words that he penned. And also that uh, his heart was taken uh, the people he loved knew that his heart was in Africa and they took the heart out of his body and they buried it in Africa. And then they prepared his body as well as they could back in the way back in the 19th century and sent it back to England by land and by boat. And finally it was laid to rest in um, Westminster Abbey. I've been there. And I walked down the nave, the aisle in the nave. 
And I remember stopping and seeing David Livingston and the paragraph that's written there about him. This great man was there, but he said he would rather be in the will of God in the heart of Africa and to be on the throne of England out of the will of God. So there's two possibilities, being in the will of God or out of the will of God. In the will of God or out of the will of God. Which are you, in the will of God or out of the will of God? So that leads me to this first principle, 2 Peter chapter 3 and verse 9, where it says, God is not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. God is not willing that any should perish. It is God's will that men should be saved. Saved or lost, heaven or hell, uh, at peace with God or at enmity with God, on the right road or on the wrong road. Jesus said the broad way, there are many that walk it, but the narrow way is the better way, is the right way, and it's the way that leads to life everlasting. That's a part of that Sermon on the Mount again. So I'm telling you, God is not willing. Are you, to put it in, in this terminology, are you in the family of God? Have you been born again or born anew, spiritually born into the family of God? I was physically born into the Michael family, but spiritually I was born into the family of God through uh, repentance and faith. Has that happened for you? I want you to pause, stop and pause and think about that and then answer yes or no. If the answer is no, stay with me. Maybe this is the hour when the miracle will take place. There's a second principle found in Romans chapter number 12. I beseech you therefore, brothers, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies, your bodies, a living sacrifice to God, holy and acceptable unto him which is your reasonable service. It makes sense. And be not conformed or molded to this world, but be ye transformed or transfigured by the renewing of your mind that you may prove or test what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. There is the will of God. The will of God is for the Christian, for the disciple. Are you in the kingdom? Are you in the family of God? Are you, um, uh, are you, are you prepared for um, the next life or the, the next step in, in life? What's beyond death? Here he says, why not learn more about this will of God by being willing to detach from the bad aspects of the world and to be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Test it. Test the will of God. As I, as I was uh, preparing for this lesson today, I, uh, I, I wanted to um, take a look at the book of Galatians and the very first chapter in the fourth verse. This is what he says. Galatians chapter number one. I even put a bookmark there and it says, who gave himself, Jesus Christ, our Lord Jesus Christ, who gave himself for our sins that he might deliver us from this present evil world according to the will of God and our Father. It is God's will that we be delivered from this present evil world. Now, this world has a lot of power. This world has a lot of attraction, fascination. But it also has a lot of bitterness and hurt and embarrassment and shame. And if we get uh, caught up in the things of this world, it can easily lead to things that... Um, are painful. But here it says, let's test, let's, let's try and find this, this will of God, this will of the Father that, um, that will um, deliver us or transform us, a renewed mind, 
being able to think clean thoughts, clean thoughts about the opposite sex, clean, clean thoughts about uh, our vocabulary, what words to say, clean thoughts about uh, finances, clean thoughts about how we treat other people, to have, to, to honor other people rather than degrade them. This is the will of the Lord. And here's another one. Ephesians chapter 5 and verse 17 is knowing the will of the Lord, knowing the will of the Lord. Um, do not be unwise, it says in verse 17. Don't be unwise. What's another way to say that? The word begins with S. It's stupid. Don't be stupid. Tells me, John, don't be stupid. Try and understand the will of God for your life, for your day. And let me go to another one, Ephesians chapter 6, doing your best at work. We're speaking to employees, and it says, hey, do your work as though you are not just working for your boss, not just me pleasing someone who's watching over you, but as you do it to please the Lord who bought you with a price. This is the will of the Lord, doing your best, doing your best at work. Here's another one from 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, chapter 4 and verse 3. It is the will of God that we should abstain from fornication. Pow! Wow! That really is a good one for today. It says, abstain from fornication. In other words, abstain from sexual impurity. It says we ought to learn how to possess our vessel or our body in sanctification and in honor so that we should be devoted to the Lord. Our bodies should be presented to the Lord. It is good to abstain from fornication. May every young person who hears that verse look it up and color it in red. 1 Thessalonians 4 and verse number 3. It is a powerful text. And then here's another one, another principle. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5 and verse 18. I'm quoting, in everything, in everything give thanks for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. It is good to, you know, to give thanks to the Lord under all circumstances, in all circumstances, even the sometimes hardships in life, to be able to give thanks. Thank Him for a flat tire. Thank Him for a delay. Thank Him for a hardship. And then 1 Peter chapter number 2 and verse 15. This is one I'm going to turn to. 1 Peter 2, and, uh, and read to you what uh, Peter has to say. Submit yourselves to every ordinance of man for the Lord's sake, whether it be to the king as supreme or unto governors, and then uh, it says, who are sent as unto them that are sent by him for the punishment of evildoers and for the praise of them that do well. For so is the will of God, that with well-doing you may put to silence the ignorance of foolish men. So it says that as a citizen, as a citizen of my country, I should learn to do the will of God, which is to praise them that do well and to support those who seek to keep our country peaceful and safe and free. Now this is the time to get ready to vote. Who am I going to vote for? I don't know. I've got to study this thing out. I've got to analyze it. I know that if I listen to the commercials that I can easily be misled, but I'm not going to just listen to the commercials. Sometimes I have no choice. I have, they happen to come on when I'm watching the news or whatever, but at the same time, I got to read between the lines and so should you because to be a good citizen is to read between the lines and to find out for yourself what do people stand for and are they telling the truth? And um, this, is, uh, this, is a, this is a part of the will of God for my life and for yours as a disciple of Jesus Christ. Now I'm making an assumption at this moment that you are a disciple, but I have one more to go. Chapter 3 of 1 Peter in verse number 17. It is about suffering, for it is better if the will of God be so. 
It is better if the will of God be so that you suffer for well-doing than for evil-doing. So if the, the, the context of here is people are misrepresenting you, they're saying things that aren't really true, that aren't accurate, and it says if they're doing that, why, hey, it is, it is better if the will of God be so to suffer, to suffer this. And it's, it's better to suffer for doing what's right, for doing what's good, for doing what's honorable, for doing what's virtuous. Because that kind of suffering brings glory to God. My friend, the will of God, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And maybe you'd add a couple of words. When you say the prayer next time, you can say this, thy kingdom come, thy will be done for me in this world as well as in heaven. It's time for you to pray and you could pray the sinner's prayer if you haven't done that. Dear Lord, I know that you will hear and, and enter anyone's heart who prays the sinner's prayer. God be merciful to me, a sinner. And may there be someone who comes into the kingdom of God today. And I pray for your blessing upon those who are disciples who seek to know the will of the Lord in their lives. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, from Maryland, I want to say thanks for watching and um, we hope to see you again next week. Until then, goodbye and God bless you. You've been watching program number 2307. If you have any comments or inquiries regarding this telecast, please address them to Miracles, P.O. Box 128, Mankato, Minnesota, 56002, and refer to program number 2307. I Believe in Miracles is a Ministry of Grace Baptist Church in Mankato. Recent Miracles programs are available online at youtube.com slash GBC Mankato.